Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. We are charting our course through the worst performing tech tree tanks from tier 6 onwards. We're now at tier 10. We've looked at the worst performing light, we've looked at the worst performing medium and now we're on to the worst performing heavy. And that brings us, apparently, according to Blitzstars, to this one, the 215. Be. Now this one, I have to admit, really took me by surprise. I did not expect it to be listed as the worst performing tank, but apparently it is. And don't believe me, Blitzstars has all that details. Now as you can see, the 215B has a 48.07% win rate. That's pretty shabby for a tank of this caliber, because this is a nice tank. You can see one of the problems it has is, well, twofold. Firstly, its survival rate at only 29.73%. And then, well, realistically, its damage per battle, which is 1,755. What also surprises me is the tanks that are nipping at its heels, which is the E5. That has a win rate of 48.50%. at a slightly worse damage per battle, but it does have a better survival rate. But the one that really, really got me was if you go further on down there at a 49.75% win rate with a damage per battle of 1,965 and with a survival rate of 35.59% is that of the Kranwagen. Now, I personally think the Kranwagen at the moment is the worst performing tier 10. And that got me thinking, well, hang on a moment. The Crown Wagon isn't really great. It doesn't have the best DPM. It's always had bad DPM. But its mobility has been sort of tinkered with, and the mobility of the tank isn't that great, to be honest. And I am shocked that tanks like the 57 Heavy, the IS-7, are ranking worse performing over and above tanks like the Crown Wagon, which is why I was even more shocked when I saw the 215B up there. So what can it be about the 215B? Well, the biggest indicator for its win rate is that of the survivability at 29%. Now, the 215B is a heavy tank. So how come it's got less than 30% survival rate? The other thing is, it actually has a really nice gun, and we'll see that. So I'm scratching my head here, and I know that a lot of the community when I say a lot of the community, I'm on about the, you know, the average players and below do struggle in this tank and they don't like it. And they don't like it and they struggle in it because they misunderstand it. And that is the thing about the 215B. But let's jump into the garage. Let's have a look at its parameters and let's see where, if possible, the player base are just getting this one wrong. So here we are in the garage looking at our 215B. And hit point wise, it's got 2,576. That's not too shabby. Armor, well, frontally on the turret, it's got 264. That is actually very, very nice. On the side and on the rear of the turret, it's 159 and 106 respectively. It's not too bad. The hull, however, is a different story. 140 on the front, 106 on the sides, and 79 on the rear. And this is where you start to get the player base becoming a little bit unstuck. View range, well, I've got it with optics and everything, so the view range is just shy of 280, which again isn't bad for a big lumbering heavy. Concealment, it's never going to be a very concealed tank. 31 while stationary, 27 while moving, 6 upon firing while stationary. DPM, well the DPM is lovely, 3,008 per minute. That is not bad, this is a heavy tank. Reload time, shy of eight seconds. Penetration, 272 on your standard ammunition, which is AP, 342 on your premium ammunition, which is APCR, and a whopping 187 on your HE. Now, Wargaming have literally just buffed the HE penetration on this tank. And 187 is absolutely obscene, to be fair. And if you're not firing HEs whenever you can in this tank, then you need your head red. Average damage, well, we've got 400 on the AP, not bad. 
340 on your APCR and 515 on your HE. Again, these are beautiful, beautiful figures, especially for that HE. Aim time, just over two and a half seconds at 2.6. Dispersion, that's not too shabby either. 0 0.303, that's pretty good for a heavy tank. What about the gun depression? Well, again, this is where some people become unstuck. It's only seven degrees down, 15 degrees up. And the reason for that, it's a rear mounted turreted tank. And therefore people kind of struggle with that concept being rear mounted. Speed, again, not too shabby. 34 going forwards, 12 going backwards with an average speed of 30. And its terrain crossing ability isn't too shabby either. 109% on the road, 91% on the ground, 71% in the water. So with that in mind, what is actually going on with this tank? And the only thing I can think of is, there's two things. One, people are just not understanding its armor profile. That's number one and therefore they're putting it in the places they shouldn't put it, uh, exposing that hull and getting absolutely wrecked. And then secondly, they're misunderstanding it all. It's, it's basically a rear mounted turret and therefore you really aren't gonna get much out of that gun depression. But before we get into all the equipments and consumables and the provisions, etc., etc., let's have a look at its armor profile and let's see if we can see what exactly this tank looks like when facing off against, let's say an IS-7. So here we are in Armour Inspector and this is what a 215B looks like when it's facing an IS-7 with its standard ammunition by the way. The IS-7 has only got the standard ammunition loaded here and as you can see the hull is a problem. I mean the penetration zones it's it's 224mm that is 100% and that is sloped. Same with the bottom glacius plate that's 118mm and again it's sloped. So the IS-7 is going to just slice through that. The turret, on the other hand, is a big red tomato. And the chances of penning this, including the mantle, it, is really, really slim. The other thing you've got to be mindful of is the cupola. Now look, the top of it is pretty difficult to pen, but there is a zone in the middle area that everybody can pen. So this is where people start to come unstuck with the 215B. They misunderstand the armor. Now, like I said, it's only got seven degrees of gun depression. So let's stick the gun depression in and let's stick it on a haul down. And boom, all of a sudden, this is a completely different tank. You're not bouncing this front plate. Uh, sorry, you're not penning this front plate anymore. You are bouncing it. And if you're in a proper haul down position, that bottom plate should be covered. And not only that, this zone here becomes incredibly difficult to hit. And that is the thing about the 215B. Whilst it has only got seven degrees of gun depression, which means you're not really doing, you know, massive gun depression stuff here, it is enough just to hide that top glacius plate and get that sloping armor to start to do its job. And you're only gonna be looking at it like this, and it's a very slight hill, very slight haul down. The other thing you gotta remember about the 215B is like, some, like unlike some of the other rear mounted turreted tanks, we, if you stick this gun over the side or over the back, it doesn't change the seven degrees. It's seven degrees all the way around, so it doesn't really help to be perfectly honest with you. Can it side scrape? Well, what do you think? <laughs> Not really, because all this becomes open. So it's it's meant to be a ridgeline monster, and that is the thing about this tank. Let's jump back in the garage. Let's have a look at its equipment loadout, provisions, and consumables that we can possibly load up to increase its strengths, so to speak, and get it fighting more effectively. Here we are, we're back in the garage and we are now looking at the 215B and its equipment loadout. Now, you can run this one with either calibrated shells, which is what I'm running it with, gives me that extra penetration, which is one of the things I do want, or you can run it with a supercharge. Now the, the thing is, sorry, a gun rammer. Now the thing is, the reason I don't run it with a gun rammer is because I think the reload time is good enough as it is. Its DPM is good enough as it is. I mean, it's, if I load the reload time, it brings it down by half a second, okay, if I load this rammer. Whereas I would rather have that penetration. Now, it's a toss up to be fair. It's up to you at the end of the day, what do you prefer? I'm just saying I prefer it with that calibrated shells. I'm then running the defense system because that's what I always run. I've then got improved optics on this one, just gives me better view range. I've got the enhanced gun laying device because I want that aim time to be super, super brilliant. 
At the moment, I'm running it with hit points, but I do sometimes change it for that 4%. And the reason being is because that 4% is across the hull and the arm and the, and the turret. And the 215B does have a very, very good turret. So this one, it's not like the other tanks where 4% of nothing is nothing. This one can make a difference, especially on the turret. But at the moment, I'm running it with the additional hit points because it gives me 138. And the 215B, to be fair for a heavy, does sort of struggle with a lack of hit points. I'm then running it with the engine accelerator just to give me a better turn rate. I've then got the vertical stab. I do not need the refined gun. The gun on this tank is good enough. I'm using the, aim in using the vertical stab, bring that aim time down. And then, of course, got the toolbox and I've got the high end consumables. Talking about the consumables, well, this one comes with quite a lot. At the moment, I've got adrenaline. I've also got the super duper improved engine boost and I've got the multi restoration pack. Now, sometimes, sometimes I may jump into the reactive armor because that sort of helps with showers coming at you except HE. But, 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 at the moment I'm running it with the improved engine boost and it's a toss up a game between these two. I'm using the engine boost because it just gives me that little bit of oomph as I need to get forward or backwards. So that's why I'm running it with that. Moving over to the provisions, well, the reason why I've dropped the reactive armor is so I can use the enhanced sandbag armor. That gives me some more hit points. Again, it gives me 6%. So that's not bad, brings my hit points back up. Then running it with putting in T makes my crew work that little bit harder. And the protective kit just protects everything in the tank. Moving over to the ammunition loadout. At the moment, I've got 20 AP, 13 APCR, and 12 HE. 12 HE seems a lot. Well, not really. Not when you think that the penetration of the HE on this thing is 187 and you're going to be knocking out 515 every chance you get to fire an HE. And believe me, this thing will slice through the bottom plates of even things like the E100. So you've got to be mindful of this. You know, your HE on this tank will slice through the bottom plates of some of the super heavies. So it makes for good tanking to use a lot of HE where you can. I'm still getting the APCR because there are still like, you know, the cheeks of the E100s and the mouse and all that sort of stuff. Still really difficult to pen. Whereas my main ammunition is that of AP. So let's jump into a couple of games and let's see what this tank is actually like to play. And if there are some hints and tips that we can bring to our gameplay to get us more effective in this tank and to get this tank more up there, so to speak. So here we are, rolling out on Rockfield. Now I forewarn you, when I played this game on the stream, I was having terrible, terrible ping issues. There were ping spikes all through the yin yang, and it wasn't the easiest of games to play. But I wanted to highlight this game because it goes to show you how good the gun on this tank really is. Here comes a bat chat, yoloing through, take a bit of a snapshot from the HE, 600 damage almost. I mean, that's just beautiful. And that is what the HE can do on this tank. It is pretty hardcore. It's pretty filthy, to be fair. And if you are rolling out on this thing, then HE is just one of those ammunitions that you should be looking to get into your gun as soon as possible. Now the ping sort of takes me by surprise a little bit. Um, I tried to get a snapshot on this AMX. Again with the HE, thinking I'm going to get his sides. He drops off the map. There he is. And look at that. What a snapshot. Okay, we only did 182 damage. But that's not the point. I mean, the ability to snap that shot out from distance and actually get the penetration was very nice indeed. However, we're now going to have a bit of a bugger's muddle on the E5, mainly because of the ping. And the gun is all over the place. But this is where it ping spiked. So, you know, you think you're aiming on it and you're not. And again, you think you're aiming on it on your knot, but because the ping says, no, we're going to ping spike. And they were pretty big ping spikes, to be fair. However, it's settled down. And the E5 is going to present his backside. And we're just going to see if we're at 504. I mean, it's not a high roll. 515 is the top, but it's good enough. I mean, it's still 500 odd damage going into the back of an E5. And he's down to nothing. Here's the Vicar. Snap him again. Boom. More damage. And, you know, th this tank with this HE is just beauty. Now the thing is, you need to be able to put this tank in the right place. And as I keep saying in all these videos, 
the tank isn't generally the problem. It's it's moreover the player. We're not knowing the maps, not knowing where to put it. Another 515, that's a nice roll into the back of the AMX. We're going to ram him for a little bit, and then we're going to smack him a bit more and take him down. We end up on this game on 2,354, not setting the world on fire. We kept all our hit points, and we did reasonably okay. And that is what you can do in a 215B. But again, as I keep saying, you've got to know your maps, guys. And you've got to know the weaknesses of the tank. The weaknesses of this tank is that lower hull. So, with that in mind, you need to try and hide it as much as possible. And then you play the tank to its strengths. And therefore, you need to know the maps, because you need to know where you are going to be putting this tank. Okay, we were third damage. Ephelump stealing the uh, thunder there in his back chat. Now we're rolling out on Molinjet, and we're in a supremacy game. And what I want to do, I want to get this thing onto a ridge line. I want to work the gun depression, basically. So I'm going to this side of the map. This way, I got shots across to the A cap if they go there. And I've got an ability to defend this middle area. This is where the 215B can be utilized nicely. To be honest with you and again I've already got the HE preloaded because I can see there's a Progetto. Now I'm expecting the Progetto to push in to that B cap. Not too worried about the Yo at the moment. I'm more concerned about the Progetto. He's not going to move so we've decided let's push on him. I'm again with my long suffering two mate Ephelop. He's in the Leo 1 this time so we're going to push down onto this Progetto and we're going to load the HE and boom bang 492 into his side. We're going to push him even further because he's not focused on me and load the HE still and boom, down he goes. We've now knocked out 882 in just two shots. That is quite nice considering the reload on this thing. I mean, the reload's eight seconds. It's beautiful. So I'm going to push up here. I don't think I'm going to be getting there in time. I think with the engine fire there, they're going to be able to take out the TVP. That's okay. We'll just turn it around, get back into the fight. So far, we haven't done anything spectacular. We've, we've taken a few hits um, and we've taken a tank down, but that's about it. We're now going to push down onto the heavies. I can see the Yo is pushing through. He's just dropped off the map, but there he is. And look at this for the bottom plate. Look at, look at his bottom plate. I've got HE loaded. Look at his bottom plate. It's wide open. Allows me to put 548 into his bottom plate. This is obscene. 187 millimeters of penetration is just obscene. Another 457. Keep rolling up. I mean... Uh, he's just totally penable. Boom, another 462 already. We're up to 439 damage dished out. Just on HE. We're only firing HE. Bang, down he goes, 513. Now we can push on to the E100. And you can see there that we're not going to be able to use our HE on the back of him. Not to worry. We'll put 377 into the back of his turret on the AP. We knock out 3,000. 239 damage. We take two kills. We lose hardly any hit points. And that, to me, is a nice game in the 215B. Okay, we only get a third class. I'm not setting the world on fire here. But it's all about what are you wanting to take away from the game, guys? Are you looking for those big damages? Are you looking for, you know, those, that, those massive damage games and those golden M's? If so, then yeah, the games like this aren't going to be cutting it for you. However, if you're looking to win and you're looking to improve and you're looking to get better in the tank, games like this are going to get you there. You know, it's all about winning at the end of the day. Anyway, a lot of people think that the 215B is a bit there and it's a difficult tank to play. Well, it is a difficult tank to play, but now I'm going to show you another replay. This time, it's pretty spectacular. Now we're rolling out with Vix Lency of the Clan Loka. He's a pro player and a bloody good one at that. He is in his little 215B and he's got his pro camo loaded. And he's going to give us a real masterclass in how to play this tank. Already he's gone to this ridge line. He's trying to get that sort of angle on that bottom, that, that upper glacius plate. And at the same time, harass and annoy the enemy. And he's doing that. They don't know what to do here. Do they push? Do they? What do they do? And he's just going to hold his line. That FV-183, FV you know, the Death Star. Very far forward, very advanced position. They've just lost their IS-7, but hey, don't worry about it. And you know, we've got plenty of game to go. And boom, he takes a shed load of hits there from those TDs sat in the corner. 
but he's just going to reevaluate his position. He's going to sit there and think, oh, well, that's a bit of a nasty shot. But uh, he's going to reevaluate his position and think, what can he do? So he's going to drop down, as you do, and he's going to pull around. And instead of going on to the Yo, which is what most people would expect, he's going to give the AMX Firebird a bit of a hard time. And this is just beauty. I mean, the Firebird looking at this turret is like, well, what do I aim at? What do I shoot? What do I and look at this? Boom, straight into the bottom plate. 401. So he's, he's done 800 damage so far. And now the Firebird makes a slight mistake, slight error as he comes over the top. But he does help take out the VK. So two tanks down on both teams here. He's lost a few hit points in the 215B, but oh, load the HE and get 503 into the side of the AMX. He's now up to 1700 damage. The Yo is now going to push. Don't know if that's a good idea, Mr. Yo Yo. But don't forget, the Yo has got some TDs in the corner supporting him. Look at the gun depression. Work the gun depression. Get the HE into the side of the Yo. Now up to 2200. Can you get... No, it's so difficult to get that Capola from distance, even though the dispersion on this tank is pretty nice. However, look at this Yo. I mean, he's trying to get those Capolas. That's not... That, that didn't help really. The Yo was retreating, but uh, he's now going to be able to work these two. Down goes the Yo. Now up to 2,561. Now he's got the AMX, who's a one-shot. It's three against three now with that kill. And the three tanks left, we've got what? A Jaegeru that's coming in. We've got the E4 or E3 that was over the other side and looks like an E100. So bang him into the bottom plate there. There's the E100. He's trying to work his magic on this ridge. He's up to 3,000 damage now. Great shot into that uh, ventilation hatch on the top of the Jaegeru. And this is the thing about this gun. The gun on the 215B is just a beaut. And a lot of people don't realize that it's a spectacular gun. Now he's going to look for that tracking shot, which he gets. Now the E100 is pushing around the corner, thinking that he can take on these tanks. So instead of fighting off with the Jaegeru, push round onto the E100, give the E100 a bit of a hard time. He's, he's just showing his turret here. Bit of a missed time shot there, but not to worry. Down goes the Jaegeru, leaving two against three. Great tracking shot, 365. He's up to 4,700 in damage. He's actually up to 5,000 because he had a blind shot earlier. Into the sides there of the E100, using the turret turn, using the hall turn, using the mobility, getting up close and personal. And as you can see, with AP, when you're up close and personal like this, firstly, you're going to be able to get that turret ring, which is what he's doing. Switches to APCR, gets that turret ring, and survives that battle. Bounces a shed load because he was up close and personal. The E100 only being able to get his gun down. Tracks the E4. The E4, he takes a bit of a big hit from the E4 there. But he's now going to push up on the E4. He's trying to get the HE to work. It's not going to work frontally there. So he tracks him again. He's going to perma track him now because the E4 just can't get that gun down. Is he going to try to perma track him? Oh, he thought about it and he did. The E4 just can't get the gun down. He's looking for those penetrating shots. He's at 6,589, which is actually more closer to 7,000. Jaegeru comes and finishes his off. He takes two kills. He bounces 100, 120, and he also dishes out just shy of 7K. And that is what you can do in a 215B if you know the positions on the map where to stick this thing, and if you know how its armor and everything works. That is a beautiful, beautiful game. It really, really is. So that's the 215B, apparently the worst performing tier 10 heavy tank. A tank that I actually enjoy and I think is pretty misunderstood by a vast majority of the player base. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is an easy tank to drive. I'm not saying it's, you know, a very noob friendly tank because it isn't it's incredibly difficult to drive because of that lower hull but if you play the tank to its weaknesses hide those open glacius plates both up and down get it into a slight hull down position work that gun which is fantastic you can have fun in this tank 
and you can be very successful. As I said, it's got amazing DPM. I mean, it's churning out 3,000 per minute. That should be telling you quite a lot. I mean, that should be saying that it's got a great gun. It's got like a Leo-esque gun on it that is insanely accurate, and you need to start using that accuracy. But it's not a frontline tank unless it desert it, you know, unless it's got that ridge in front of it. Or, like we saw with the final game there, it's going to be facing off and hugging tanks like an E100 towards the end of the battle. As I say, your hit points are a very precious resource, but a resource nonetheless. Don't throw them away in the early stages of the battle, guys. Don't be so eager, because once they're gone, they're gone. You cannot get them back. Anyway, I've been Fujit. Well, that has been my look at the 215B here in this masterclass. By all means, comment and everything below. And remember, guys, until the next time, it's only a game, so stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because, hey, that is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.